Hello, welcome back. Um, this is our second video. And we're going to start by uh, doing some analysis on all the forms of mechanical work. So, first example is a spring, it has a spring constant and have an inertial force acting on it. And we need to determine the work needed to compress even for this um, spring. So, we're going to start with a um, simple diagram of the situation okay you raise this now we have a simple diagram we have our spring and um, we have a force acting on it And um, the springs need to move in this direction. This is X. So we know the force uh, that it has in the spring will be equal to the preload of the initial force plus the spring constant times the displacement. Okay? If we would like to get the work required, we will need to perform an integral. This integral will be force time dx from state 1 to state 2. This force here, this force here, is the force of the spring so we can just substitute and have internal for first state second of f0 plus ax dx uh, separate the integral we will have And we really recognize that this force is constant because it's our preload. So we'll just have solving the integral. We have um, plus. Okay, we know that uh, since it's an increment, we can assume that it's going to zero because it's already preloaded, so this will be and we know the data, we would need to substitute. We have that the initial load is uh, 0.45 kilonewton times the x centimeter that we would like to learn plus uh, one half of the spring constant, which is uh, 3.5. Kilonewton per, per centimeter times um, it's another centimeter, so it's one centimeter square. This cancels, and uh, we will have. Two point two kilonewton 
centimeters. So this will be the work we need to do in order to stretch this spring one more centimeter. Okay. Thank you, Des. Hello. Uh, in this video, we are gonna um, do a quick calculation with different units. Uh, this is more for helping us to deal with the combination of units. So we have a classroom that contains 40 people and we need to air condition this uh, room. Uh, we are allowed to buy 5 kilowatt cooling capacity air conditioning units. And we have uh, three loads. Basically, we have loads from people, from lighting, and through the walls. And um, we know that the room needs to be maintained at 21 degrees, so we, we need to determine the number of uh, air conditioning units that we will require. So, we are going to start just by uh, writing our first law general, you know, first law analysis. And, um, we know that we have a Q in minus Q out for a system plus work in minus work out for that system. And if we assume that this is a closed system, we don't have any infiltration of mass, we know that this could be change of energy in the system. This change of energy will be equal to uh, a change in internal energy plus change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy. We could uh, imagine that we have the room just close, rigid walls. Uh, we have three sources of Q that are coming in uh, from people. Q from um, lighting. And through the walls. So, room is fixed volume, so we don't have any work in or out. We can see that we don't have any work. Um, I mean, the only two out that we are going to have is the one that will be from cooling, right? We can see that uh, we don't have any change of potential energy or kinetic energy since uh, the room is going to be stationary. And since the room is going to be at 21 degrees constant, we don't expect any change of um, internal energy. So at the end, we can say that. Q in should be equal to Q out, and that's basically that all of the heat that we gain in the room will be removed with the air conditioning units. So let's say that the Q in will be the summation of all these loads. So we start with the um, Q in will be Q by the people plus. Q by lighting plus Q through the walls. And let's start with people. We know that we have 40. And uh, that each people is assumed to dissipate 360 um, kilojoules per hour per people. We can cancel this and we're going to convert this to um, the straight 
we can convert this to uh, seconds so one hour is 3600 seconds so we have kilowatts this is uh, hit by the people now we can add here that we have in our lights and in the lights we have 10 lights and each slide we've been told that it consumes 100 watts we can see that we have kilojoules per second so it's kilowatts so we need to convert this to kilowatts as well so one kilowatt is equal to 1000 watts and finally we can get uh, the heat estimate walls and windows which we have been told is 15,000 kilojoules per hour similar to this part we so one hour is 3,600 seconds so we have kilojoules per second kilowatts kilowatts kilojoules per second is kilowatts so if we add all this you can get this is 9.67 kilowatts since the number of units will be queuing divided by the killing capacity that each unit has So 9.67 kilowatts divided by 5 kilowatt per unit this gives us more than 1 less than 2 we cannot comply by uh, fractional units so we will need 2 units Okay, thank you. Uh, finally, for this um, second video, we're going to solve another problem. This time we have a pump, and we know that the drying force of fluid flow to pressure difference. We mentioned before in class that uh, a gradient is needed to create a flow. This great this pressure and the flow is. Uh, fluid flow. So we have a pump that is um, that uses 3.8 kilowatts of electricity when it's operating and we know that uh, the pressure increase that we have in the pump is 7 kilopascal so we are asked to find what is the maximum um, volume flow of gasoline for this for this data. Okay so we know that um, this work have uh, will be the mass flow rate times uh, P2, P2 minus P1, V1 or V is specific volume okay um, we don't know we know pressure to remember we were pumping liquids and liquids uh, you remember that are incompressible incompressible that means uh, volume 1 will be the same as volume 2, specific volume. In other words, density remains constant. So we can take it out, say mass flow rate times the specific volume, and it doesn't matter if it's 1 or 2 since they are the same, times P2 minus P1. 
and we can recognize this is the delta p that we have been given. Are given. So, um, if we do a, an analysis of this part, you can see that this mass flow rate has units of kilograms per second and this specific volume has units of cubic meter per kilogram so at the end we have cubic meter per second which is volumetric flow rate remember that this capital V with your line and dot is volumetric flow rate so we can uh, change this expression to be the volumetric flow rate times delta p and this will be the power in our unit is giving it's um, the pump is using so solving for volumetric flow rate will have and substituting we know that we have 3.8 kilowatts and we're going to buy this by 7 kilopascal so we know this is 0.543 what about the units we have kilowatts which are kilojoules per second by by kilonewton per square meter we know that this kilojoule is kilonewton times meter. So we can cancel kilonewton, we can cancel kilojoule. We know that this is cubic meter per second. So the volumetric flow rate that we can move with that power in this pump will be 0.543 cubic meters per second. Okay guys, thank you.